Hello. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to my presentation. The topic I researched was leaders of social movements. So let's hop right in. The faces you see on the screen are the faces of people who laid their life on the line for issues they believed in. As you can see, these faces are all unique, but they are all equally important. Visible leaders can be crucial to social movements as they bring a face of humanity to the issues being fought over. It's key for social movement leaders to be their authentic, unique self. This allows followers to model themselves after these leaders. So who are the faces on the screen? Susan B. Anthony was a women's rights activist. She helped lead the women's suffrage movement. Her roots in social movements came from her family, which participated in the abolitionist movement. Anthony helped create the New York State Women's Rights Committee. She also helped start petitions for women to have the right to own property and to vote. Brenda Howard was an LGBT activist and a sex-positive feminist. Her roots in social movements came from joining the anti-war movement during the Vietnam War. She is known as the Mother of Pride, as she helped plan and participate in the 1970s Pride March, which is recognized as the first LGBT march. Malala Yousafzai is an advocate for women's education around the world. She is a best-selling author of the book I Am Malala, which recounts her life in Pakistan and the assassination attempt on her committed by the Taliban while she was on her way home from school when she was 15 years old. Malala Yousafzai is the youngest person to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. Marsha P. Johnson, the P standing for Pay It No Mind, was an LGBT activist that participated in the Stonewall Riots. It is reported that she threw a shot glass at a mirror in the Stonewall Inn, screaming, I got my civil rights, which was labeled as the shot glass heard around the world. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., and James Baldwin are three prominent leaders of the civil rights movement. Malcolm X was a minister of the Nation of Islam, a political and religious movement. He helped grow the movement from 400 members to 40,000 members in just eight years. MLK was a Baptist minister who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. James Baldwin, a writer and playwright, his novels grappled issues such as fathers in black households, religion, homosexuality, and interracial relationships. All three of these men played a pivotal role in ending the legal segregation of African Americans, as well as helped in creation of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. As you can see, leaders play varying degrees of roles in social movements. They are either inspired by participating in other social movements, or happen to find themselves smack dab in the middle of one. Whatever the case, all of these leaders are immortalized in history for progressing their movements forward as to make sure the voices of those in need were heard. What makes a good leader? Our book mentions that good leaders have at least two of three of the first three traits. Leaders with charisma attract new members. Having a pro-social behavior promotes cooperation. Cooperation leads activists to supply vigor to social movements. Prophecy creates politicized identity with meaning. One key way in which leaders can motivate group members to try harder and thereby help deliver better group outcomes is by cultivating a strong sense of us within the teams they lead. Achieving and maintaining a sense of belonging was found to be crucial to one's physical and mental health, especially when coping with disasters. In Maslow's hierarchy of needs, belongingness and love needs are important for our growth as individuals. Good leaders help members fulfill this need. Pragmatism. Putting it simply, pragmatic leaders help achieve goals. Through the use of organizational skills, being good negotiators, and resource mobilizers, leaders can help accomplish reform. Adaptability. This means being flexible during crisis situations. Sometimes social movements are tested by their opposition. 
During these times, leaders can hold together the movement and push it forward. What makes a bad leader? Narcissism can make leaders engage in unethical decision making for self-serving purposes. That's to say, narcissism predicts outcomes that are good for the narcissist, but bad for those who are close to the narcissist. Having a narcissistic leader can ruin the credibility of a movement and even tear it apart. Abuse of powers. Hoarding resources, failure to punish negative behavior that doesn't align with the social movement, and using powers to take advantage of others. All of these abuses of power can crumble a social movement from within. What powers do leaders have? Leaders only have as much power as they are given, but sometimes these powers can be extremely influential. Speaking to political representatives can lead to political reform, sometimes faster than originally anticipated. Leaders have the power to frame the issue. This can increase solidarity among members and encourage outsiders to join if they agree with the movement. Punishment. Leaders who both cooperate and are willing to punish non-cooperation are likely to be most effective at promoting the public good. Rally the social movement for specific events. This means using the resources available to create more visibility for the movement. In conclusion, leaders of social movements have a great deal of influence on the in-group and the out-group. They often can become cultural icons that inspire generations of individuals to stand up for themselves and others around them. They can also cause harm to their movement if they are motivated by selfish desires or are not fit for leadership. Overall, social movement leaders are fascinating to study due to their immense courage, intellectual abilities, and compassion towards their people. Thank you for watching my presentation. Here are the resources I used throughout the presentation.